Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Hi guys, welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to be covering another item that was requested by several viewers. On the charts, you can see the TTM trend. That's an indicator licensed to think or swim by John Carter. And this indicator I've got spread across four graphs. Later on, we're going to be updating those graphs to plot different stock charts. Ticker symbols that I've plotted over here to the left. We're going to be looking at Google and Goldman Sachs, Mosaic. Uh, VMware and uh, we're going to be looking at those because those have alerts that are going to be triggered. So what we've got here is the ability to use the TTM trend and apply a chart based study alert to this indicator so that you get an audible and a visual notification not just the change in colors but you also get an audible alert when there is a change in the trend. So basically we're just capturing when it changes from red to blue or blue back to red. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the disclaimer out of the way. And that is, I just want you guys to understand that I am not a professional trader. I am not here to show you how to make buy or sell decisions. Don't try to copy anything that I do because all I do is lose money, literally. Nothing in this video should be interpreted as an advertisement to buy or sell any financial instrument. My goal here, my only goal, is to show you how to get the most out of your Thinkorswim platform, to develop tools that I know are useful to other traders and provide those tools sometimes for free in this case and other times for a price. And we've got a few premium indicators on the website and we'll be adding more soon. But I also want to continue the tradition of delivering you guys some good quality stuff. Basically the, the requests of the viewer drive the content of the channel. So the more you guys uh, give me input and feedback, the, uh, the the greater variety and the greater chance you're going to see your ideas presented in one of these videos. Okay, so let's get started. What I'm going to do, let me explain first what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain uh, how to get the code over from the, the licensed study into a custom study. So we're going to be showing you how to create a custom study in your Thinkorswim platform and we'll give it a name and save it. And then I'll show you step by step how you take and add the lines of code in to access the TTM trend plot without the source code. But we're going to access that plot and we're going to be able to configure an alert. or actually two alerts, one for a bullish uh, reversal, one for a bearish reversal. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm going to show you step by step here. And by the end of the video, you'll be able to do it yourself. Okay guys, here we go. We're going to show you step by step how to get this done. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'll show you where you can go on our website where you can grab this code and copy and paste it just in case you can't follow along in the video or in case you make mistakes and you break something. I'm going to provide the code for you. It's going to be on the website. So I'll show you how to get to that. Okay, so first step. Let's go ahead and edit the study. So I'm going to click this flask icon here, which is the uh, ability to access the studies. I'm going to click on the edit studies here. That's going to open up the edit studies dialog and you can see that I've already got two studies added to the chart. Now one is the TTM trend that is the the, the copyright, the license study uh, from John Carter and the other is a custom one that I made that has the alert built into it. We're not going to show you that one just yet because I want to show you this step by step. Okay, so in order to view the code on a Thinkorswim study, you just click on the little script icon where my mouse is hovering. And when you click on that, it's going to open up another window and you're going to be able to see the source code. Now in this code, you're going to see a note that says the source code isn't available. So Thinkorswim has a way to hide the source code on licensed studies. On the studies that we build ourselves and save to our own platform, then those studies, the source code is available. So here what you've got is two inputs and we're going to capture those, okay? And then you want to notice these two plots here, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to build that into our custom study. So we're going to capture that too. We don't really need this, this uh, assigned price color. Eh, we're not going to do that. 
So all we really need are these four lines of code right here. I'm just going to highlight them, right click, select copy, and then we can close this. I'm going to press cancel and we're going to click new. You see this button down here is new to create a new study. So go ahead and click that and you see it gets a default name. So you can name it to my custom study. Now there's some rules here. You can't put spaces in here. So if you need to separate words, put underscores in. And uh, let's see. So all right, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're in the Think Script Editor, okay? Not the Condition Wizard, but the Think Script Editor. And I'm going to delete this first line because we don't need it. I'm going to paste in the code that I copied, and we're going to be using that. But uh, these two really won't work, okay, at all, because uh, they're not tied to the TTM trend indicator. I'm going to show you how to do that step next. Okay, so let's see. I don't type and talk at the same time very well, but I'll try. What I'm going to do is type in a couple of lines of code here. And these lines of code are going to reference this, this first part here. You see how I'm typing TTM underscore trend. Uh, let me get that right there. TTM trend. And I'm going to move this out of the way just so you can see it's exactly the same way it's spelt in the built-in study, all right? Because we're actually calling that study from within this custom study. We're going to open parentheses and then we're going to use the uh, comp bars. I'm going to copy and paste that in. Okay, so I don't make any mistakes. We'll put a comma between these because these are arguments. We're passing these as arguments to the built-in study. We're going to close parentheses. So this is a way that we can say, hey, TTM trend built-in study. We need some action over here. And so then it's going to say, well, what do you need? And so we're going to tell it what plot that we need. Now we're going to, we've got two plots to use. We've got trend up and trend down. So what we do is we put a dot at the end of this and trend up. We want to make sure we capitalize, uh, get the case correctly there. And so that completes that one. So, all right, so this is telling TTM trend built-in study, give us the value of trend up. So it allows us to access the built-in license study without any of the source code. So this one here, I'm going to be basically the same thing. Uh, let's see, and then we'll do comp bars, paint bars, dot, and then this is going to be trend down. And see, I've just matched that. That trend down is exactly the same as what was in the original code. And this trend up here, exactly the same as it was in the original source code. Now we don't need these because they don't they're not really attached to anything. So we're going to delete that. Okay. So now we need to come up with a way to uh, re read within the code when the trend is changing from a trend up to trend down and from trend down to trend up. Okay. So it's um, we only got four lines of code left to write here. There's only going to be eight lines of code in this indicator. So it's real easy. You're going to be able to follow along and do this without any problem at all. So hang on just a second and let me grab the rest of this and we'll do the next step. Okay, so we're going to begin with another def statement. Uh, def is just short for define. It's how we declare a variable. So I'm going to create a variable called bull reversal. And I'm going to make that equal to uptrend, which is just right up here. This is the one we just captured the trend up indication from the built-in study. So that's all I'm saying is I'm saying it equals uptrend. And also I want to say downtrend from the previous bar. You see how I'm putting the one in brackets here? The one in brackets are telling the code to look at the bar to the left. And I did forget to complete that. It doesn't recognize that because I need to complete that variable name to downtrend. So essentially what we're saying is I want the current bar to be a blue. And I want the bar previous, okay, the bar to the left, to be red. And that's all we're doing here. So then we want to build an alert. So here's, let me show you now, this is how you do an alert. It's really simple. So we type alert. This is a function, built-in function in thinkorswim. We open parentheses and then we need some arguments. The first argument is going to be the condition. It's a true or false. So when we have a bull reversal, so it's just saying bull reversal is true, and then we put a comma, so that's the, the condition. And the next is what appears in the message center. So you can put in whatever text you want in here. And if you wanted to uh, concatenate and um, you know put in a value 
let's, let's say you wanted the close to appear here, you do that too, okay? And, uh, but we're not gonna do that in this case. So I want bullish trend as my alert text and then uh, put a comma in here because the next one is going to be, this is from the constants. Uh, this is alert constants. They have different ones. They have some that uh, will trigger every single tick. One, uh, one that will appear, um, an alert that will trigger once and then be disabled. And this one, alert.bar, that's the one that says every time there's an alert on a new bar, then we're gonna trigger, but we're gonna be quiet until the next bar. Okay, so we're going to put a comma here, and the next argument, the final argument, then is the type of sound. And there's uh, several built-in sounds here. You can't do any custom. Sorry about that, guys. But here you go. That's uh, the ring sound. And what did we miss? We got a red indication here. Bull. Oh, I didn't spell that right. And who, who, who in the audience caught that? I'd like to know. <laughs> Okay. All right. There you go. So uh, the code, I mean, the, the code editor here is really handy. It just tells you if there's an error and tells you how to fix it. All right. So we're going to do now the bear reversal. So I'm done with the bull reversal alert, guys. Okay. That was it. One line is the alert. The first line tells us how to define the condition. The next line tells us how to do the alert. In the book, in the case of bear reversal, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to type out the line, the statement that gives us our condition, and then I'm going to type out the line that gives us the alert, and then we're done. For those of you who are really quick to catch on, you can probably complete this on your own from here, and uh, I challenge some of you to do that. Just hit the pause button, see if you can type out the rest of this uh, statement here and the, and the alert that comes after this, and then compare it to what I've got here when, uh, when I'm done, and see how you do, because uh, I want this to be a learning experience here. All right, so bear reversal is going to equal a down trend and uptrend from the previous bar. Now, I, technically, I don't need to put this yes in here, but I'm doing it to make it more readable for you guys so you understand that we're, we're trying to say that uh, the downtrend is present on the current bar and the uptrend was present on the previous bar. Just doing that for readability, we could just take that out you see this right here? You can just delete that out. And, and it works just the same. It, it, just the same. So sometimes in writing code, you do things for readability so that you're like, what did I do that for? Well, if you write it into the code a certain way, then it's easier to remember. So we're going to go ahead and build our alert here. Bear reversal. And we need a comma. And then we're going to need our text. So we're going to call this bearish trend. And then the alert dot bar and then the sound dot ring. Okay. And then we're done. We have no errors. So guys, that's it. Uh, that's exactly how you write this. I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want to save this. I've already got it here. I'm going to click the script icon on the one that I've built in here. Chart alert TTM trend script icon here. And you can see that's exactly what I just got done typing. Okay. So guys, that's how you do it. Now, if you want to stick around, I'm going to show you uh, where on our website you can go to get this code in case you're having trouble typing it out and you're creating errors and you broke it and you can't fix it. So don't worry about it. Stick around. I'll show you next uh, where to go on our website to get that and just copy and paste it. Okay. So stay tuned. Okay. And also be sure to stick around after I show you where on the website to get the code because I'm also going to show you what the alerts look like when they get triggered on the charts. We're going to go through those four stocks that I mentioned earlier. We're going to update those charts. You're going to see how the alerts are triggered and you don't want to miss that. So I'm going to press cancel here and cancel because I don't want to save any changes. And then let me go ahead and show you where on the website we can get this. Okay, so first off, let, I, uh, let me post the link. I'm going, to, I'm going to display the link. Don't follow this link right here. Okay, this is a preview. I haven't actually created the page yet. So don't, don't try to go to that website address. You won't get there. But instead, go to the one that I'm posting right now in a, in a bright uh, bar, a bright white bar with text. It's got a H, you know, www.http um, right across the top of the screen here. And, uh, and use, the, use the one that I've posted here on the annotation in the video. Don't use the one that's displayed in the in the web browser. So what you're going to do is when you get to this web page, this is going to be the video web page. So a lot of people, a lot of you have uh, got to this part 
from the web page and you're actually watching the video from the web page and you've already seen this part you're already on this page and so all you need to do to get to the code uh, oh I wanted to show you one thing here guys uh, I get a lot of people saying hey can I leave a contribution can I donate well yes we have due to, due to viewer demand we have responded and yes there is a way to do so you just go ahead and select the dollar amount that you want to contribute you know whatever you feel comfortable with and then hit the pay now it's through PayPal so it's totally safe and secure well secure as PayPal can be and I think that's pretty darn secure and then you can use your own credit card or a PayPal account uh, whichever way you want to do that uh, let's see so then okay so what you do is you go to this website right where the video it's it's basically the website that hosts the video that you're watching you scroll down below the video and at the very bottom right above the comments okay you go ahead and highlight that code copy and paste it okay all right guys so don't go anywhere now we're going to show you what the alerts look like as they get triggered on a chart okay so here we are now, what I'm going to do is, see upper left, I'm going to replace SPY with Google. Now, you heard that alert tone, and you can see that we've got an alert up here, chart alert, and it tells you the symbol, and there's the text that we typed in to that alert statement, bullish trend. All right, so now over here in the upper right, I'm going to type in GS for Goldman Sachs. You see we've got that single blue bar, and again, we've got message center is giving us a bullish trend alert and we had that ring sound and oh I almost forgot guys there's uh, before we leave don't go anywhere uh, because I'm also going to show you how you can make adjustments to the alert from the place where you uh, adjust your inputs on studies I'm going to show you where you can adjust the alert parameters from that window all right so let's see down here in the lower left I'm going to type in MOS for mosaic Bingo, we got another alert, another bullish trend. I'm sensing a trend. And let's see, what's the last one here? Uh, VMW. VMW, I'm going to replace IWM with it. VMW, that's, I think that's VMware. There you go, another bullish trend. Okay. And they show up over here. I'm going to click up in the upper right hand corner. You see messages. And these are all the alerts that were triggered. Okay. Uh, also some messages that come from the thinkorswim platform all right so you can go back and look uh, historically and see uh, when any of these alerts were triggered okay so all right so next i'm going to show you guys how to adjust the alert settings like if you want don't want the ring sound you want it to be a bell or you want the chimes also going to show you how you can disable an alert without removing a study from your uh, chart all right so we'll show you how to do that right now so we'll go to studies edit studies and then remember I told you, you didn't have to edit the code you can do it with the gear icon so I'm clicking the gear icon and this is where you edit your inputs and you can see right here a lot of times the alerts is closed but if you just expand that there if it's closed just expand it and you can see you have alert one alert two and you can see that alert one is the bullish trend the sound is ring and here you guys can now see the different choices you have available for the sound you can uncheck that if you don't want it to play a sound you can do uh, you can uncheck show and message center if you don't want it cluttering up your message center you can also uh, uncheck the enabled button that's how you can turn the alert off without removing the study from your chart okay and uh, this is where you can remember I was telling you about the alert dot bar well there's also alert dot tick and this is an alert dot once so that's alert dot once this is alert dot tick and this is the one we set it to which is alert dot bar okay and now I think that is finally everything that I wanted to show you on building an alert for the TTM trend. Guys, thanks so much for your support. I really appreciate all the comments, the positive comments, as well as the questions. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to help you guys uh, with, uh, with tools like this. Thanks again for watching. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hondashtech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thanks and take care.